guys today in this video we are going to design our own dimmer circuit and we'll implement it on proteus we'll check its response whether it will work or not but in our previous video we have interfaced a robot 9 dimmer with node mcu and uh, we took help of blink app to control the brightness or you can say to dim a filament lamp and in this video we will specifically focus on internal working of that dimmer circuit at how zero crossover detector circuit works how we are triggering a track at to to switch the load the ac and the output uh, to uh, to drive the load so everything will be covered here so be with us till the end of this video so guys let's get started so friends to design the circuit we need certain components such as bridge rectifier mc2 mct2 eic moc3021 bt36 track 47 kilo ohm resistor 1 kilo ohm resistor, 10 kilo ohm resistor and potentiometer with Arduino to test our circuit for dimming purpose. So take all these components and as per, as per the circuit diagram start connecting them and then finally connect them with Arduino. So first let's talk about zero detector circuit. In zero detector we are using a bridge rectifier and as you are seeing here in the circuit that two 47 kilo ohm 1 volt resistors are used before applying our 220 volt AC to our bridge rectifier. Why? To limit the current to bridge rectifier. And then the output of the bridge rectifier is further driving an octocoupler which is uh, connected to interrupt pin of Arduino. The interrupt is connected to a pull up resistor there as you are seeing in the circuit diagram. You will see, you will come to know that why we are connecting it in with a pull up resistor and why we are using interrupt pin. So now let's see how the circuit works. So friends, this is zero crossover detector circuit. As you are seeing, the output of bridge rectifier is driving this LED, this optocoupler's internal LED. And this LED is further driving that transistor. So if this LED is on, that transistor will turn on. And if this LED is off, that transistor will remain in off state. So let's say the, trans the LED is on and this transistor is also on. You can see that the path for the 5 volt through this 10 kilo ohm resistor is to the ground. That means in this situation that the level which will be applied at it from interrupt pin 2 will be logic 0. But once this LED will turn off, automatically what will happen the transistor will also turn off and connection of this 5 volt to ground will break and the interrupt pin will be applied with logic high due to pull up condition. So like this we will be getting a logic zero and logic high depending on the situation we are applying at our optocoupler's input using this bridge rectifier. Now let's understand it in better way using these diagrams. So in this diagram you can see that we have a 220 volt AC waveform of 20 millisecond time period that means the frequency of this signal is 50 hertz. And output of our bridge rectifier is given below where you can see that on every 10 millisecond we will be getting a zero cross and to detect zero cross we will be using this circuit so now again we will come at the output of bridge rectifier and we will take initial condition non-zero position condition and the LED will remain in on state if it is a non-zero condition which will further turn on our transistor so if transistor is turned on the current will flow from collector to emitter and you can see that that 5 volt through 10 kilo ohm resistor is connected to ground in this situation. So what state will be applied here at uh, log interrupt pin to logic 0. But once we will get a 0 cross, automatically this LED will turn off. When the output of this bridge rectifier is 0, this, at, this LED will turn off. Then the transistor will also remain in off state. If it is on off state, then directly what uh, what is applied to pin number 2, logic high due to this pull up condition. So on every zero cross, we will be getting our pulse at our interrupt pin and that is what we need. We need, we are using this circuit to detect a zero cross so that we can take decision to trigger our track for driving our load. So after uh, this, we will take a look on another circuit where we will be triggering our track to drive our AC load. After zero cross, we, we need this circuit to drive our track. 
as you are seeing here we have a moc t3021 optocoupler ic so internally there is a there is a led again and which is driving further a diac and to if you talk about the connection we are going to drive this moc t ic with the help of output pin 9 and then you can see that the output of this or you can say this diac is going to trigger this triad so the gate pulse will be applied with the help of this diac and then using this track we will be switching our output load which is our filament lamp so like this we need to make the connection these are the components which will be required now let's come to the working of our circuit so again we'll take help of this diagram to understand the dimming process so first let's understand that what will happen when we will be sensing a high a pulse at interrupt pin 2 so if we sense a pulse at interrupt pin 2 that means there is a zero cross in the signal so if there is a zero cross we'll sense a pulse at the interrupt pin 2 and we need to send a high signal at pin number 9 to drive our track or you can say to send a pulse to the trigger pin of track so if there is a pulse on track track will on and that ac load will connect to the uh, bulb so this is the first situation there is a zero cross and the pulse is detected at interrupt pin 2 and instantly we are sending a high signal at interrupt at pin number 9 so that means our track is on instantly after detecting the zero cross so that means we are applying almost 100 percent ac signal to our bulb so the bulb will glow with its full brightness now let's take another situation instead of instantly sending out signal at pin number 9 after zero cross what we'll do we'll send a high signal at pin number 9 with a delay of 3 millisecond that means once we'll get a zero cross we'll wait for 3 millisecond and then we'll send a high signal at pin number 9 this means that for first 3 millisecond after every zero cross the track will remain off and if track will remain off we are not getting anything at or you can say nothing is applied to our ac bulb and you can see here in the diagram also that portion for 3 millisecond from the waveform ac waveform is chopped off so this will be the signal ac waveform ac signal will be applied to our bulb so if this portion is chopped off from our waveform that means that rms value also reduce so the bulb will get dim let's say if again we send after detecting zero cross again what we'll do we send a high output signal at pin number nine after a delay of five millisecond so what will happen that the uh, after five millisecond if you are sending a high output the track will remain off for five millisecond that means half of the waveform of ac waveform will chopped off that means we are now applying applying half of the potential to our bulb so definitely the brightness will also reduce to half in this situation but what we need to do we in order to get different uh, voltage we need to chop or we or let's say we need to send the output signal with a delay from 0 to 10 millisecond that means we need to vary it within a range of 0 to 10 millisecond because on every 10 millisecond we'll be getting a zero cross so like this our uh, dimmer circuit works
Okay friends, now let's move to the programming part. You first need to add the Robotdyne library. We have mentioned it into the description. And then simply you need to find that Robotdyne example in the example for Robotdyne dimmer. So in this example, you have to uh, change the pin numbers. For example, we are using pin number 3 as output pin and pin number 3 as inter pin, input pin. So these changes you need to make here. Actually in my previous uh, explanation, I used pin number 9 as output. So please make that change or make that change in your program. But before uploading, you need to check the preferences whether you have ticked that compilation uh, or not because we need this hex code here. Because this, this link uh, for hex code we need to mention in Proteus to check the simulation. So copy this link this, uh, uh, from the uh, uh, Robert, uh, from the ID, Arduino ID and you need to paste it there in Proteus. Wherever that hex code will be required for Arduino. Okay, now let's move to the simulation part. So first we need to paste this copied link uh, into the Arduino to execute this using that hex code. And to apply the pulse to the track detecting the zero cross, we will be using this potentiometer and we will vary that delay within a, within a range of 0 to 10 milliseconds. As you are seeing, these are four channels A, B, C, D, and these four channels are connected. Channel A is connected to our interrupt pin to show the zero detection. Channel B is connected to AC power, AC input power. Then channel 3 is connected to the output of pin number 3, which will be applied to our track and then finally the screen uh, or you can say channel D is connected to our AC waveform which is passing through the bulb uh, through track. So you can see here in the graphs that whenever we are changing this uh, using this potentiometer that firing angle or you can say that delay we are getting the chopped waveform at the output. I am sorry that, that uh, it's not showing properly but it will work. We have used this circuit in our uh, projects and I have given this GUBA file for this design PCB in the description link. So like this a demo works for our AC and if you want to design your own dimmer PCB you can watch our dimmer PCB design with EZDA. Okay guys thanks for watching this video see you in next video goodbye.